In the last couple of videos, we looked at how to build and program a minimal circuit on a breadboard that will run Arduino code. Once you've gone through those videos, you should have the circuit pictured here. And as we discussed in the Arduino as ISP video, you should be comfortable using an Arduino board as an in-system programmer to upload programs to your breadboard circuit. Once you've programmed the chip and the circuit is working correctly, you're going to want a way to make a permanent soldered version that you can include in your project. The easiest way to do this is to use a proto board, which is a pre-made board that matches the layout of your breadboard exactly. Proto boards are available from many manufacturers and come in numerous shapes and sizes. But for this video, I'm going to focus on the Perma Proto Board from Adafruit, which is one of the nicer ones I've seen. It comes in three sizes depending on your requirements, but for this video, we're going to use the half size version. Along with the Proto Board, you'll also want some 22 gauge solid hookup wire in a couple of different colors. I also like to pick up some 22 gauge stranded wire for off-board components, just because it's a little more flexible. You'll also need a power adapter that has an output of 9 volts DC and enough amperage to comfortably handle your project's requirements. And of course a jack that fits the power plug on your adapter. If your project will be in a metal box, you want a jack that's fully shielded. I also like to include a chip socket for the microcontroller. It's not a requirement, but it makes repairs much easier. Before we start, we're going to unplug the circuit and remove the LED and resistor that we used in the last example. We'll also remove the reset button and its connecting wires since we won't need them in the permanent version. Now we'll look at the process of transferring a circuit from the breadboard to the proto board. Since the two boards have an identical layout, this is simple to do. All you really need to do is remove a component from the breadboard and place it in the matching location on the proto board. Next, flip the board over and solder the part in place. Finally, use some side cutters to clip the leads flush with the board. Now that you've got the idea, let's start building the board step by step. Let's start by placing the 10 microfarad capacitor across the positive and negative rails. Remember the stripe on the capacitor goes on the negative side. Next, we'll place a small jumper wire from the negative rail to row 4 on the board. For these connections, I'm using 22 gauge solid wire. Next, we'll connect a jumper wire from the positive rail to pin 5. I'm using different colored wire to indicate ground and plus 5 volts. Next, we'll add the power regulator across rows 3, 4, and 5. Notice the orientation of the metal tab. Now we'll add the 100 microfarad capacitor between rows 3 and 4, with the stripe on row 4. Now we'll install the 1N4001 diode across the middle of the board on row 3. Make sure the stripe on the diode is facing the top of the board as shown. Now let's install the chip socket for the microcontroller across the middle of the board, starting on pin 7. 
If you don't have a chip socket, you can solder the microcontroller directly to the board. I just like having the flexibility of being able to replace the chip. Notice the location of the pin 1 notch on the socket. Solder all pins of the chip socket to the board like this. Check carefully that there are no solder bridges between pins. Now solder a 10 kilo ohm resistor from row 7 to the positive rail. Now attach a wire from the negative rail to row 13, another wire from the positive rail to row 14, and a third wire from the positive rail to row 15. Here's the three wires in place. Now on the lower side of the board, attach a wire from the positive rail to row 13 and a second wire from the negative rail to row 14. Here's what they should look like. Now attach the 16 megahertz crystal between rows 15 and 16. Notice how it's installed on an angle to make it fit. Now install two 22 picofarad capacitors from rows 15 and 16 to the negative rail. Now you can insert the microcontroller into the chip socket. Make sure the pin 1 mark on the microcontroller matches the pin 1 notch on the socket. Be very careful when you're inserting it to make sure that none of the pins are being bent. Now install a long jumper wire from the upper positive rail to the lower positive rail and a second wire connecting the upper negative rail to the lower one. Take some time to check over your work. Look for things such as solder bridges or bad solder joints or components in the wrong place. Finally, we'll connect the power supply to the circuit. First, you need to confirm how the plug on your power supply is wired. If you look at the label on your power supply, you should see a diagram similar to this. This diagram shows me that the center pin of the plug is negative and the outer shield of the plug is positive. So now I know that this part of the plug is negative and this part is positive. So on the jack, I'll find the terminal that connects to the center pin and solder a black wire to it. I'll connect a red wire to the other terminal. I'm using the 22 gauge stranded wire for these connections. Now, solder the black wire from the jack to the negative rail on the board. Solder the red wire, which is the positive of the power supply, to row 3, the same row as the 1N4001 diode. You should now have a fully functional, permanent circuit running your Arduino code that you can install in an enclosure and use for years to come. Visit notesandvolts.com for more projects and tutorials, and once again, thanks for watching.